Welcome back then. We're now gonna continue getting these flying things. Space things flying, what they're called. So that's one down here. In that box. There we go. So now back upstairs. Yeah, they go on there. Do that. Where is it? That fly. Yes. One more now. Lovely flashing lights for Christmas. Oh, one on the far left. Ah, found you! Well done, you've well collected done. all the flies. I certainly won't be missing them. Now, buzz off. Oh, ha, ha, ha. A very impolite and also a great play on words. Just fills me. Okay, so we've done all the ingredients. Two. So we can now back to Hogwarts. See how there's waiting for us. If you've got all your stuff, we'd best be getting back to Hogwarts. All right, you. Back up to Moni Melt's bathroom. Thankfully, it takes you there, though. It's all right well at the top. Well done getting all the ingredients I asked for. Did you manage to get any powdered horn of bicorn? Yes, but I had to sneak into Snape's office last night to get it. She wouldn't get me creeping about in Snape's office, especially at night. Here's the flaxweed and not grass. That's very small. And here are the boomslang skin, That's lace very wings, small. and leeches. The small How long blob. until the polyjuice potion's ready? I'm afraid we still need some extra ingredients. Something from Crab and Goyle. I've already managed to get some hair from Millicent Bulstrode. I hope you're not saying that you're going to turn us into Crab, Goyle and Millicent Bulstrode. Well, Crab and Goyle in particular are the only people Malfoy trusts. He'll tell them anything. You do want to find out whether Malfoy's the heir of Slytherin, don't you? Of course we do. I just hope that the Polyjuice potion will wear off. That's all. Of course it will. Ron, I think you should try and steal some hair from Crab and Goyle after lunch. They like to have a nap after feeding their faces. I've got a bad feeling about this. Come on, Ron. Let's leave Hermione to prepare the potion. Unlucky. This potion is going to be very difficult to get right. Oh, well, I'm sure you'll manage. Miss Brainy, after all. Oh, God, it's a ghost. This is a girl's bathroom. You're not a girl. Get out! My life was nothing but misery at this place, and now oh, people my heart are feels coming you. along, ruining my death. <laughs> what a sad person. Get out! <laughs> Leave me alone! Fine, I can't bother to talk to you anymore. Oh god, we can go through it as well. Cool. If you hadn't guessed, that's Moaning Myrtle. Now back up here. I have to go all the way back now to go to the common room. Hogwarts is like a maze. I suggest you follow the carpet if you want to get back to the common room. Told you. I suppose I'd best get some hair from Crab and Goyle. Good luck. I'll meet you by the common room later. Okay, so we're going to head there now, but I'm going to cut it out because it takes too long. So, if you now head to the rear hall... Got Harry, one again. Crab, Goyle and Malfoy are in the Great Hall. They've enrolled in the duelling club. I wonder who'll be teaching it. Let's hope it's not Lockhart. I've had enough of him for one day. Okay, so if you now make way to the entrance hall, or the front hall, when there's two kids outside. Harry, have you heard? Malfoy's in the Great Hall, and he's challenging everybody to a duel. Yeah, and no one's beaten him yet. Why don't you go in and duel with him, Harry? I hear you're pretty good. Go on, Harry. I'm sure you can beat him. It'll be great to wipe that smile off his slimy Slytherin face. It's nice how they all hate Slytherin. Okay then, the duel between Harry and Malfoy. Classic scene. He's now waiting for us. There's four people there as well as Harry and Draco and then there's Professor Lockhart. Very popular, isn't it? If it isn't the great Harry Potter, fancy a duel? I'm something of an expert. Oh, get you. Go on, Harry. You can do it. Yeah. Better watch out for the candles, Potter. They've got special jinxes in them. Trust me, you're going to need all the help you can get. Okay, it's like a normal duel. Get ready. Duel. 
and basically you've got to uh, beat him. Simple as that, really. He's no harder than any other duelists. I'd say, like, uh, I don't know. This is alright, quite easy to do. Just get enough powerful spells. There you go. Harry Potter. Oh yes, lovely and dramatic from Gilderoy there. Yeah. Get ready. Duel. Okay. Ah, blow me. Ah. Just amazing. <laughs> one going. Cool, blow me. Go on, get me that. Another blue one. What's that blue one? Not a green one. Come on. Come on. Hey, green one. I want it. Oh, fuck! I missed it. Oh, welcome anyway. Expelliarmus. Ah, I got it. If you think that makes you the winner. You've got another thing coming. Try this, Potter. Uh -oh. Serpent sort ya. That's about our play, surely. That's a that's pendo, isn't it? Oh, 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 oh. Okay, so you've now got to face this giant snake. Lovely thing. Basically, you'll keep the pendo in it when it opens its mouth. If you're normal pendo, as you see, you basically take off hardly any help. So you want to do a fully charged one. And even that does take off loads. So she can ah. be quite a long boss fight. And the key is to keep moving. Otherwise, we'll get you with a little bit of venom he's got. God, this is going to be a while. So keep back, keep moving, you'll be fine. Halfway now. Ouch. Again, I'm failing a bit at this, I'm killing it off, but I'm also killing myself off at the same time. Ah! Two more should do it. Hey! Can't really afford to do my health now. Oh, oh well, I'm still alive. There we go. That's now story time! Yep, another story. Narrated by Stephen Fry of QI fame. Besides, did, did I actually see Rob Bryden and Ben Miller kissing on it last time? Last furiously, night? Hilarious. the snake slithered towards Justin Finch Fletchley. Leave him alone, Harry shouted. At least, that was what he thought he What the blue sparks from? When he looked up at Justin, he was met with an angry look. What do you think you're playing at? The snake was lying slumped on the floor docile as a thick black garden yeah, hose. Face, like. <gasps> so why was Justin, and everybody else for that matter, regarding him with a look of horror? You're a parcel mouth, Harry. Why didn't you tell us? Harry Where's didn't know what there? a parcel mouth was, so Ron told him. <laughs> you can talk to snakes, Harry! Hermione informed Harry that being able to talk to snakes was what Salazar Slytherin was famous for, and how the whole school was now going to think that he, Harry Potter, was the heir of Slytherin, and therefore responsible for the attacks. Uh-oh. Not good. Dumbledore wasn't in his office when Harry got there. It was a very interesting room, however, and nearby, Harry spotted the sorting hat. As he approached it, the hat spoke to him. That's very friendly. You've been wondering whether I put you in the right heart. But I stand me. by what I said before. You would have done well in Slytherin. Harry's heart plummeted. He told the hat he thought it was wrong, and then a strange gagging noise behind him made him wheel around. Harry yelled oh in God. shock as the bird burst into flames only to emerge from the fire more beautiful than it was before. 
Wow. Then the office door opened and Dumbledore came in. Fawkes the Phoenix is really very handsome, isn't he, Harry? Harry nodded, still shocked by the sight of the bird bursting into flames. Dumbledore explained how phoenixes were fascinating creatures. Well, they can carry immensely heavy loads, and they make highly faithful pets. At the cut Dumbledore the went on to say that he didn't believe Harry was the attacker plaguing Hogwarts, and he asked if Harry had anything that he wanted to tell him. Harry thought of the disembodied voice he'd heard, and his growing dread that he was connected to Salazar Slytherin. But in the end, he didn't want to say anything about them. Okay, but that's it for now. See you next.